was the sort of process you took from being a schoolboy, curious yeah. and suspicious mm. of authority through to actually putting that into a job? A friend of mine was working at the ABC, working in radio, and I always loved radio, and I always loved Triple J, and I always thought, how good would it be to work there? This person who I knew, this friend of mine at the ABC said, look, there's a, there's a job going three hours a night doing the phones on Tony Delroy's program on late night radio. And so I went in and, you know, they were a bit desperate. And so was <laughs> I, and they gave me the job. And I started doing that job, just answering the phones, doing talk back. While I was in the ABC, I kept ringing people at Triple J because I thought, okay, I'm in the door now. Yeah. And I'd, I'd ring people and they'd never return my calls. The one time they paid attention to me, Caroline Jones, you know, who yep. presents Australian Story. Sure wrote a piece in The Australian lamenting the axing of a radio program called Sentimental Journey, and it was done by this guy called John West. And he'd done the show for 50 years. And she was saying, what a pity this is that he's lost his program. And I wrote a response piece saying, I'm sorry, that's not a pity. The guy had a great run. What's a bigger pity is that young people don't often get their opportunities to get programs up. Mm. We shouldn't be lamenting someone who had a bloody good run for 50 years. What about the ideas that never get up? It's a good point. And I criticise the ABC for not giving particularly young program makers a break. And I got stuck in a management and they charged me with bringing the ABC into disrepute. And I had two warnings placed on my file. The next five jobs within the ABC I worked for I didn't get, but I kept working as a casual. But those people at Triple J who were ignoring me when I was making phone calls suddenly found out about me because I got these warnings on my file and also they read the so article. So does that rate as street cred in Triple Maybe J? Maybe it rather. did. <laughs> so I got, got their attention and before you knew it, I, was do I did a one month stand up there. They said, oh, there's a gap here. Can you come and fill it for a month? So I got my foot in the door. What's the most difficult situation you've ever been in on air? When studios melt and they melt down, that's really difficult. You mean technically? Technically, or, yeah. yeah. Um, in commercial radio and a lot, large parts of the ABC, you have someone panelling for you. At Triple right. J, that doesn't happen. You're panelling yourself. So when you're interviewing, you're watching the clock, you're in control of the faders, you're turning microphones on and off, you know, you're driving. And that's why, that's why when you first start in radio, it is so hard because imagine learning to drive and having a conversation with the person next to you. You can't do it. You're holding on to the... Concentrating on everything like that this. you've got going. That's what it's like when you first start in radio because you're concentrating on this panel and you're trying to work that out and relax and be yourself on air. So it's really difficult. Likewise, when the studio melts down, you've got to fix it on air while continuing talking. So that is really difficult. I had Alexander Downer live on the line and I can't remember what the interview was about, but I know that I've been prepping it all day and I've gone to hit his phone line up. You hit a button and pull the fader up and it fired off um, a, a cart. So someone has rewired the desk and I cannot get the phone line up, right? Now, you always have little safety nets in radio because you know that the worst case scenario, something's going to happen. So I always used to carry this little CD in which had a story on it that was timeless so we could play it at any stage. Now, the story on this CD was about a swingers club. <laughs> Perfect so, introduction to Alexander Downer. <laughs> so I've got Alexander Downer on the line. We're trying to get him, him up. It's not working. It's like, oh, hang on a second. Um, we'll try and get him in a moment. So we put this story on about swingers clubs. Now, I've never heard this story, <laughs> but within the first 30 seconds, it talks about a guy who puts his dick through a hole in a wall and it get, <laughs> gets it sucked off anonymously by someone at the other end. And Downer is on hold listening to this. <laughs> I can't get it. the phone line working. So we end up doing talk back or something for the rest of the program. So I then ring his mind at five past six and say, look, I'm really sorry. Um, we had a technical mess up and his minder, who I have to say was a complete prick, yeah. um, just said to me, not because of this response, but just, just dealing with him in general, said, um, well, you're really blown your chance now, mate. And um, sure enough, I didn't get him on for another year. You've managed to forge a very successful career around something that you thoroughly enjoy doing. Mm. Do you think that's possible for a lot of people? Yeah, I think so. I mean, a lot of people spend their lives being miserable in jobs they don't like. Mm. Um, what a waste of time. I mean, it's, not everyone can be lucky and do what they really love, but you should aim high and go for what you want to do. It's really important to have an understanding for what you want to do, mm. because then you can actually work out how you go about getting there. Just to mention something back in my career at Triple J. Yeah, sure. There was a time when I wanted to be a reporter, and my then boss, I said, I really want to work as a reporter, and he said, no, I want you to be the executive producer. And I said, but I really, really, really want to be a reporter. And he said, well, bad luck. And so I decided that I was going to say to him, well, if I can't be a reporter, I'm going to leave. 
Now, that, I had only been at Triple J for a year. So I kind of played a game of high stakes poker. He said, mm. okay, you have a think about it for a week and then come back to me. And I went in there and I said, I'll leave if you don't make me a reporter. And he went, oh shit. And then he went round. <laughs> I think because he was a bit lazy and he didn't want to have to find someone to replace me probably. Um, and then he went round to some other managers in the offices. Can we make this happen? Oh yeah, yeah, we can do that. And it happened. So then I became a reporter and then I became a presenter. But if I hadn't have made that, that taken that risk, mm. all the things that I've done subsequently would not have happened. So I think it's important to, to take, a, take the odd risk to get where you think you want to go.